Hey, it's Boxer, host of The Boxer Show, weekday afternoons on 92.3 WCOL. You're listening to the Arena Guys Backstage Pass podcast with Gary the Arena Guy and Dave Renoberger. And I don't care what anyone says, Gary has blonde hair with a few strands of gray. (laughs) (laughs) I do. Uh, There we go. This is an optical illusion. Thank you, Boxer. Good friend to the show. Good friend to us. Great guy. Great yeah, guy. Great guy. Um, and, and Dave, this is podcast. Dave Redelberger. Yes. Hello. Arena and guy. I'm the arena guy. Uh, we had great response to podcast number 14 last time as we uh, focused on resuming events and yes. what the past year and a half has been like. And this time, we're definitely resuming. We are yeah, underway. We, we are in the heat of things right now, man. It is, it is hot and heavy, and we are running at full speed. At both arenas, plus Mershon Auditorium. We'll talk about those shows and a couple of shows that we've recently done. Plus, it was just uh, Columbus Blue Jackets opening night. We'll talk to ABC Fox Sports Director Clay Hall, Kevin Costner, Modern West, October 28th at Mershon Auditorium. That's, that's going to be so cool to have Can't Kevin wait. Costner and his band here. One of his band members, his bass player, uh, is from Columbus. And he was real into the Columbus music scene in the 70s and 80s, and he's been with Kevin Costner for about 15 years now. He'll join us coming up. Got a pair of tickets for Lauren Daigle. November 11th at the shot. At the shot. We'll give you details on how you can win those. And our special guest today, she's my friend, our friend, Linda Logan, the executive director of the Greater Columbus Sports Commission. And Linda, welcome to the Arena Guy podcast. Thanks uh, for having me here. Great to see you. Great to be here at the arena. And uh, just chime in anytime you want. Okay. There's no real structure here. This is a here. fun bunch here. <laughs> <laughs> we have we'll, no structure. We'll see how you feel by the time we're done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I always cross my fingers that we might have a return appearance by a guest, but it hasn't it's happened. It's yet to happen. Yet. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's done this me. twice. That's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, let's, uh, before we get into uh, sports in Columbus, which will be our main topic today, we've had some, some really excellent shows recently at the arenas. Uh, and last uh, er, earlier we had the Gold Over America Tour with Simone Biles, Columbus native. What an incredible event that was! I have to tell you that it is just it was it was one of the crowd. It was the first crowd that we've had at Nationwide Arena of screaming girls. And what <laughs> I mean by that is, you know, usually we'll get that for the for the boy bands. You know, when we when you have that uh, uh, Justin Bieber or Shawn Mendes, but for Simone Biles, this crowd was so electric when Simone came out, and oh my. it was so much fun. There were the little girls were shaking and screaming, and uh, <laughs> it was a, a, a really fun night. To celebrate gymnastics. We had so many gymnastics clubs from all over Ohio in attendance. Uh, it was it was a really fun show. And I don't know if producer Adam knows this because he was involved with some of this, but a tweet that went out with uh, from the arena guy was actually liked by Simone Biles. There you go. Oh, that's yeah. arriving. You so know, uh, that's pretty cool. We've had that a few times with some of our artists, and then Simone, I mean, the greatest of all time for sure. Backstage, uh, I had the chance to uh, uh, pass by her a couple times in the hallway. We were moving and grooving, getting the show ready for last night. Is that what you were doing, moving and grooving? Moving. She is tiny. <laughs> you know, like because you just think of her as like this monster, like Godzilla-like gymnastics beast, and and you get back <laughs> because she's just like pure muscle, right? But back four six. Oh, Simone wow. Biles is is she's really tiny. Small uh, but produce, mighty. Pre- yeah. Oh yeah, but and 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 she just held that crowd. It was it was a fun night at the arena, and uh, I look forward to uh, maybe having them back in a couple of years. It really was, and it was appropriate that Lori Hernandez, uh, Olympic star as well, who won Dancing with the Stars a yes. couple years ago, uh, was in the show because it was a show that showed off their incredible gymnastic uh, talents, but it was set to music, so it was. It was like this show of choreography and gymnastics. It was really a lot of fun. We had the Ohio State uh, gymnastics team there in attendance too, because you know they were signing autographs upstairs, but then they were also there to check out the show because for a lot of them, you know, this is this is the uh, the you know top of their game to get to watch. Yeah. So I'm wearing uh, Dude Perfect. I don't know if the camera can see this. The uh, <laughs> Dude Dude Perfect uh, T-shirt. From Athletics of a different kind. Yeah, exactly. And this was this was another great show. YouTube stars. Uh, We've had them before. Uh, Here's another one where the kids loved it. Uh, A lot of uh, dads had texted me. Uh, A couple of my media friends said, hey, I'm a popular dad today because I brought, uh, you know, my son to this show. And they were big on YouTube. And 
Really great. And these guys are a little bit older now because their kids were running around backstage. Yes, they actually had 14 kids <laughs> backstage between uh, the tour. And uh, it, they don't go to a lot of the tour stops, but they were here in Columbus for this one. You know, a group of dads who just got really good at trick shots, right? Made their own YouTube channel. And this was great because it's as much as the little girls were screaming at uh, at Gold of America tour, there were just oh, so many uh, dads and their sons and, and daughters here too that were here and so excited to see the Dude Perfect guys. And it was just a great night of family fun. It really was. And if you've never seen Dude Perfect and their tricks, go to YouTube and check it out because it's a lot of fun. And, you know, if we're talking about it, you're saying who? Go to YouTube, yeah, check, check out. them out. They're really great. So uh, Dude Perfect was at the shot and what was really great about that night, and this doesn't happen very often, but it does uh, actually more often than people think, both arenas were, were busy that night. And at Nationwide Arena, you were at Dude Perfect, yep. and I was at Nationwide Arena because it was opening night for the Columbus Blue Jackets. So that was exciting. We're going to talk more about that in a minute with, with Linda, but uh, that was, it's very, very cool when we have both uh, arenas full. My favorite was... I don't know, maybe like five years ago or so when we had Taylor Swift at Nationwide Arena and 21 Pilots at the shot. Yeah. And then the opening act for 21 Pilots uh, got a ride to Nationwide Arena and in the middle of Taylor Swift's set sang a song with her. Yeah, the lead singer so, Paramore. Well, yeah. They were so all in very cool. Twine. And then we had uh, Columbus R&B Fest featuring some of the biggest names in R&B music. And uh, that was just you know a lot that of fun. was a, that I, I do love a good R and B crowd because they get dressed up for the shows. It is so much fun, and there was just hit after hit. Tevin Campbell, Keith Sweat. It was a it was a great night of fun. Yeah, it really was. So, a couple things uh, that have happened since our last podcast. We'll talk about what's coming up in a little bit, but let's uh, showcase a couple of upcoming shows. And when we come back, Linda Logan, the executive director for the greatest Columbus, uh, Greater Columbus Sports and Commission. And the greatest. And, and the greatest. And the greatest. Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. You know, my blunder was accurate. There you go. And we'll talk to Linda coming up. The wait is over. It's time to party. New Kids on the Block presents the return of the Mixtape Tour 2022. New Kids on the Block with very special legendary guests, Salt and Peppa, Rick Astley. This is a night you will never forget. New Kids on the Block. Schottenstein Center, Saturday, June 25th, 2022. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Art, sound, and sensory overload. Tool Live. March 6th, Nationwide Arena. Experience the sound and vision. Of Tool. Special guest, The Acid Helps. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Tool in concert. Hey, this is Jordan McGraw. You're listening to the Arena Guys Backstage Pass podcast with Gary the Arena Guy and Dave Rettelberger. Hey, thank you, Jordan. Uh, do, you, do you know who that is, by the way? I have, but I do have to know who that is. Because that was kind of our favorite trivia question for a while. He opened for the Jonas Brothers. That's right, okay. And Jordan McGraw, and everybody thought that he was the son or relation, a, re a relative of Tim McGraw, the country singer? Nope. Not at all. It shocked everybody. He is the son of Dr. Phil. Yes. <laughs> and he's trying to make it in the music world, and he opened for... He's a nice guy. He was a very nice guy, and he recorded that uh, for the arena guy. He said, who's the arena guy? So he got educated real fast. <laughs> it's, that's exactly the same thing Linda Logan said when I asked her to be on the podcast today. Who's the arena guy? No, we're neighbors. <laughs> we are. We are neighbors. And it is great to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. It's so great to be inside, to see the, all the great uh, tune-up of the arena and all the changes. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we, we completed our renovation shortly before COVID. Yeah. And so to a lot of people, they're seeing uh, the renovated Schottenstein Center for the first time. You know, if you haven't been in the shot for a while, it, it's pretty cool uh, what's happened in the way that we've kind of just blown out the concourses uh, and got all that new space there. It's, it's, it's really neat to see. It, it feels really different on a show night, too. Uh, it really does. A lot more open in a lot of ways. So, Linda, you and your team do really amazing work. Uh, the sports scene in Columbus is unmatched, really, in, in at least the state of Ohio, probably in a greater region, the Midwest or whatever. I mean, you guys work really hard to bring 
the top-notch sporting events to Columbus. And aren't we so fortunate to have the facilities that we do, the footprint, uh, you know, really the destination itself has grown so much over the years and in large part because of these great facilities that uh, we call home. We're proud of our two arenas, that's for sure. Linda, you, can, I, can I say that you're kind of like the, the Forrest Gump of, of no, 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 I, I turn of, up everywhere. Of, of Columbus sports. <laughs> no, that's a great compliment. If there is a Columbus sports event happening. You are always there. I always see you off in the background, over to the side. You know, you 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 you're not one to, to grab the spotlight, but you're you're always there. And 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 I. So so, how did this start for you? When did you when did you become? When, when did where did you? Let me ask you this: Where did your love of sports come from? You know, I was ten years old. and I went to my very first Cleveland Indians game. And I just remember walking out of the onto the concourse into the, my, where my seats were, and the majestic grass in the field. And I yeah. just remember it took my breath away. So it started there. I, I be, was such a t you know fan of the of them, and I became uh, the sports editor in my small high school newspaper. Went to Ohio University and was part of their wonderful sports program. And just so many doors have opened since then. And just the, the love of, of sports really has translated, worked for a lot of facilities in Cleveland, Milwaukee, Kansas City, and now called Columbus home for a very long time. Yeah, for, for you it was uh, the, the Indians. But for me, I'm from Illinois. So the first time I uh, walked into Wrigley Field and saw the grass and the ivy and everything there. You did it, have to mention them, didn't you? My, well, <laughs> you know what? Dave and I are both from Illinois, and uh, watching that World Series was really special because we were the only two. There, there's another guy here, too. There are three of us uh, big Cubs fans, and we were watching that in the land of the Indians. And uh, I think we kind of talked afterwards that if the Cubs had lost in that game seven, we would have been okay with that because it was such an evenly matched. Both long-suffering teams, oh. fan base. You know, I was there at game yeah. seven. And oh, you it, were? I was there. Oh. So, you know. See, I told you, she's always at everything. Was, yeah. It was one of the best sporting events ever. You know, yeah. of course, I cried for a few days after, but uh, I, was, I was happy to be there. Now the Cubs are back to being the lovable losers, but that's another topic. <laughs> let's, let's talk about uh, – nice save, by the way, on the Forrest Gump comment. I yeah, no, I meant that. that. Um, the best. <laughs> purely affectionate. Let's, let's, it is, of course, because we, we love uh, you, Linda, and, and the work that you guys do. And what's really exciting, too, is now with the crew joining the Arena District, we've got the three major professional sports teams in the Arena District. It's like uh, this new sports di district. How exciting was that when you went into Crew Stadium for the first time? And now, we, you know, within walking distance, we've got the Blue Jackets, the Clippers, and, and the crew. You know, we have these, I guess, the best sports road or street in the country, yeah. depending on how we want to coin that phrase. But um, so proud of they're all within, you know, walking distance, a block or two away. And I can't think of another city in America that can say that about a footprint um, and our passionate fan base. So it's really fun to see all this unfolding right before our eyes. It, it really is. And uh, uh, the Blue Jackets. Uh, just kicked off with opening night the other night. Wow, and was that a fun night? <laughs> I was just watching on TV. You were there. Yeah. But to be, first of all, to be back in capacity and then that performance the Jackets put on together. It was and just the sentiment of the evening, too? The sentiment with the, the, the tribute uh, uh, before the, the, the game started. And yeah, then yeah, to cool. score that first goal within, uh, what, 30 some, 40 seconds, something like that? It's a magical evening. Oh, my God. It was, it was electric. And so, but prior to the game, uh, the arena guy was out uh, in, in the, uh, the plaza for the opening night ceremonies. And boy, a lot of the fans were really excited too. Let's go Jackets! Let's go Jackets! Let's go Jackets! Hey, I'm freaking pumped, man. I got painted up three weeks ago. <laughs> I have trust in Yarmo, Larson, put a team together. We have a lot of guys that they come together, lines can come together. We're going to be good. Let's start this year off right with the win. It's about time. It's about time. We're so glad to be here. 150 miles yes. to get to this game. Woo! CBJ! <laughs> so it was really a, a party. No blue carpet this year because uh, still the, the COVID thing, that was virtual, but that should be back next year. But it's very exciting out there on the plaza for opening night. And just our, our offices are right across the street, yeah. so we get to get a, a front row seat for all the excitement, and uh, it's a, a great time of year. 
Yeah, what was that? You know, I mean, obviously it was it was such a strange time for for Columbus sports, and then so that we had the distance seating, and now you've got every everybody back again, and and the electricity that is in the district right now uh, is just just palpable. So, what's that been like for your team to have you know the, over the past you know eighteen months to have that downtime, and now kind of all of a sudden be running at full speed again? I'm so proud of our staff. Everybody was very adaptable. You know, the word flexible. Certainly, well, pivot all yeah, the sure. all the all the key <laughs> words that we've all learned uh, as part of our daily life, but just uh, you know a lot more handholding. I think with some of our existing clients, even those groups that want to come to Columbus but perhaps have to make good for some of the events that they've canceled in the past. So again, like everyone else, we've had to learn to to really uh, dig deep and understand what this could look like. It's going to be slow to come back large gatherings, but. That's the excitement I think that we're seeing right now is that people do want to be out there. They do want to get back to some normal, and that's the exciting part. So for Columbus, I think the best days are ahead. I totally, Amen. totally Amen. agree. Um, I want to talk about the, the crew in a second, and then uh, the NCAA volleyball tournament, which is coming in. But first, uh, back to uh, the Blue Jackets opening night. It's a very exciting uh, time for them. Uh, the, the team is dramatically different than it was last season. It's a rebuilding year, and uh, out there at the Plaza party before the game, had a chance to talk to ABC Fox Sports Director Clay Hall to give his insights on the upcoming season. Hey, Gary the Arena guy here at Nationwide Arena at the opening night with the Plaza party going on before the game tonight. I'm with Clay Hall, Sports Director at ABC Fox. And Clay, great to see you here tonight. Great to see them. I know. Isn't that what it's about? Isn't it exciting? Oh my goodness. So how exciting is opening night? You've covered a lot of these, but opening this night is like no other. The 21st for this team, I think about the milestones yeah. along the way. And we just finished walking with the Union Blue Soldiers, and Stinger was there, the Gold Patrol was there. They've been adopted by the team, and those are the people, they're the, they're the folks who make this so much fun. And because it is opening night, and hope springs eternal, yeah. you turn the page Brad Larson era. All of that is extremely exciting. Downtown Columbus is hopping. Oh, it really is. So tell me, this season is going to be, for the Blue Jackets, it's going to look dramatically different than last season. So what can we expect this year? Well, what's exciting is the new era. Uh, the, one of the youngest lineups in NHL history will take the ice tonight uh, to take on the Coyotes. Uh, and you look at maybe the 18-year-old Cole Sillinger. Yeah. For heaven's sakes, his dad played for this franchise, so it comes full circle. I have a better story. And this young man has made the team, and well, we'll see. I, I know they lost some people today, but at any rate, uh, he's going to center a line as an 18-year-old, and his dad, I'm sure, has got him prepared. Brad Larson has him prepared. But I think it's just all the new faces adds to the bunch. It really does. It's going to be a great night tonight. Opening night at Nationwide Arena for the Columbus Blue Jackets play. Thank you so much. As always, brother. All right. We'll talk you. to you soon. And that 18-year-old had quite a first game on opening night. It's so sentimental. And then when yeah. you think about um, the team and how long that they've been here and now that we've established uh, – an alumni that are now living here. Yes. I think there's 13 players that now call Columbus home in the off season, oh, and that. that is something that we're building on. And I think that bodes well for just uh, the next set of uh, players and retirees. Absolutely. So, I just want to briefly mention the Columbus Crew because Lower.com Field is just really exciting, and it's just created this additional excitement that was already there, but. Uh, it just is really exciting, and, and Lower.com Field is is uh, incredible. It kind of takes your breath away. It does. Because of COVID, I had been there for the groundbreaking, but had not been back until opening night. And what a transformation of the not only the neighborhood, but, you know, they, the, the Haslam family spared no expense in and what was built there and just the new memories that we're going to create. I, I was a big fan of Historic Crew Stadium and just the, the fact that we just recently hosted a U.S. game uh, that was amazing, just the atmosphere, not only for the regular season, hopefully postseason, of yeah. course, but uh, it's, it's beautiful. And Linda, Linda, I was, I was at there. opening night. Well, I was first of all, I was at opening night of Crew Stadium. 
And now I'm old enough to have See, <laughs> ditto. You know, right. Ditto. So you know this feeling, right? But I tell you, I went to the Campionis Cup game uh, at, at uh, Lower Deckham Field, and to see, you know, the international fans that were there in attendance, uh, it, it was it's a it's a great place to watch a soccer game. Uh, and, and I'm too young to have experienced that. <laughs> from well, you guys I, and I remember that opening night um, back then, and then even now, over a hundred countries tuning in yeah. to Columbus and. The fact that we have this international footprint now is also very exciting because we are the 14th largest city, and we it's time that we start acting that way. Well, you you're, you remember when the crew started off playing in the Ohio Stadium, yes. right? And they had to block off the whole sea deck, and it was a whole different experience. So to see where it's come, it, it's just exciting for the city. Can I just tell you that someone else in this room was at that? Crew Stadium game? The, the uh, Which Crew Stadium game? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the most recent. Lower.com. Lower.com field. I'm sorry, Crew Stadium, sorry. I, I'm too young, but I accidentally said the wrong wrong location. But <laughs> Lower.com field, someone else, uh, producer Adam was there. and The producer uh, of this very podcast. Uh, producer of this very right, podcast. Adam. And uh, I don't know, let's go straight to the clip. <laughs> Producer Adam sang the national anthem. Just come to the Adam, mic real quick. Real, that's amazing. Just, just in a few seconds. What was that opportunity like for you? Pardon me if I'm too close. It, it was the <laughs> coolest, just the coolest um, experience. The staff was incredible. I was blown away, really, by like the stadium itself. I felt like I was somewhere in Europe, like at an MLS game somewhere over there. It, it was an experience unlike anything I've ever had. Yeah, that had to be cool. Did you get a weird echo when you did, when you sang? I was actually worried about that, but they said that's something they prioritized when they were Because at the Old Crew Stadium, when I would do stuff on the field... When you sang the national anthem? I would do some crazy radio <laughs> halftime contests yeah. back in those days. But there was like a good second and a half, two second delay, mm -hmm. and I always wondered how anthem singers did it. Yeah, so. absolutely. Kudos to you, man. That is thank that is you, a real... Yeah, it was a heck of a performance and... and Anybody who could do that's amazing. Yeah. You know, you know, now at, I know I need to get your number for future events. Right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Gonna, yes. gonna hook you up. Yeah. <laughs> no. Give you my card after this. That's uh, great. Magic happening right here on Magic the guys backstage happening. pass you know, part of that career building. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, at the Super Bowl, a lot of times the uh, the big stars lip sync because of that echo. Yeah, it's crazy. So all right, uh, let's let's talk about NCAA uh, AA volleyball, which is coming up in December. What an exciting thing. And oh, how wow. long did you and your team uh, work on getting this championship to Columbus? We hosted in 2016. It was a huge success. So, so much fun. And just, I think, the day after, right? We started our efforts to you know, pinpoint, let, let's get this back into the rotation. Columbus is a huge volleyball hotbed. The university is a huge supporter, has two great teams in the men's and women's programs. Club teams galore in our region. Uh, and just knowing that it's a great event, the hospitality community in particular, anytime you can bring events in December to your community and let alone the third week of December. So Great. it's a win, win, win all across the board. But I love the sport and this event has that feel. It's it's that it factor, I think, that when you're there, you know you're a part of something special. So our goal is to sell it out this year. So working, of course, with Nationwide Arena staff, uh, Ohio State, the Sports Commission and other community partners that are going to make this happen. People have no idea how much work behind the scenes goes into hosting an NCAA event, let alone an NCAA championship. It is a lot, very labor intensive and there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But when it all comes together, it can be it's truly it's truly magical, especially for a championship like this. And again, the sport is growing so much and just the, you know, it's big time, right? For, yeah. Especially for women's sports. You know, we've got the women's final four, we've got the volleyball championships. And again, the work that goes on behind the scenes, the work that you all do every day, most people don't realize what it takes to host a concert or the tour, the gymnastics tour, just the, the army of people behind you right. that make it happen <laughs> before, during, and after, right? So there's all of those things. And so I'm, I'm excited about sort of our local organizing committee and that work that has gone into it. 
And there is a financial commitment that is a big part of this. And knowing that we have to make the numbers work in, or, in order to make it successful. But we, we want to be known for passionate fans. We want to be that host destination so that when people do come here, they we sell out. We, we roll out the red carpet for everyone. And they, we want them to come back. And I think that is what your listeners will find appealing about this event because it is a family event. But it is also that pride point of, of hosting something so special. Linda, I'm sorry, real quick. Uh, you know, for that person who's maybe not never been to a volleyball event, but you know, you know, this event is coming and it's a championship. Speak to that person a little bit and, and maybe why they would love to attend this NCAA championship. Again, you're supporting uh, great athletes. I think eight of the gold medal win- winners, you know, the U.S. women's team won for the very first time just a few months back. And I think eight of those 12 players played in this tournament. So you're the caliber of athletes that you're seeing um, right, you know, you can have a, a very close front row seat, if you will, uh, make it very special. So not only is it great athletes, but the atmosphere is fun. You know, the in-game productions, you all know about what happens there. They make that magic happen, whether it's the PA announcer, the halftime shows. But but I do think that there's just something about seeing great women's athletes playing these yes. at a, a very high level. The best of the best. The best of the best. And that's what I love about volleyball, too, because you feel like you are you know them, maybe whether you played yourself or your neighbor has, or you started out perhaps in the Ohio Valley region, played at the convention center over right, countless sure. <laughs> years. You know, that's what I call volleyball heaven, 40 courts where girls of all skill sets can participate, whether you're that elite player or maybe you just picked up the game and you're in the eighth grade and you found a, a passion for your team. So so I think it, you can connect, whether it's your dad's taking you to see your very first volleyball match. That was what was really cool about hosting the Women's Final Four. I can't tell you how many families have said to me that they brought their children to see that event for the very first time to create memories, of course, but they knew how special it was to be hosting an event in our community and what a lasting effect it has. Um, Our Mayor Ginther, his daughter, Claire, was not a sports fan. She was, I think, eight years old, came to the Women's Final Four, was transfixed by the game. All of a sudden, she's playing. He can't get her to come in from the backyard. <laughs> He's now his, her coach, you know. That's great. So that's just a story that about one person and one family, and we know because – He's our mayor, but how many of those stories happen every time that's that awesome. somebody I got comes chills. through the door? That's, great. So that's so arena, cool. I mean, you know. it is inspiring for a lot of these uh, young kids uh, to see uh, athletes at this level. You mentioned the women's Final Four, and always go back to that. It may have been one of the greatest sporting events ever in Columbus or in the country even of that year. I mean, it was it got uh, mentioned uh, multiple times as being – Kobe was here. Kobe was here, yeah, and as being one of the greatest events of the year. I mean, yeah, Absolutely, and I think what was so cool is we knew that we were going to be prepared. You know, your staff, our staff, Ohio State, everyone that participated, we were prepared, ready to go. But I think we underestimated – that we would have these amazing games, buzzer beaters, that now we take credit for. <laughs> you can't yeah. plan for that. Yeah, yeah. That and also the, our weather was perfect and just the way that the community that stepped that up. That was magic. All the ancillary events uh, that people participated. So the one of the biggest fears I think we had was making sh- sure that we included everyone, yeah. whether it was kids reading to the Final Four or the women leadership groups that stepped up to the plate. So I feel like this is, again, an event like that, that we don't want people to miss it. How can we make sure that we're leaving no stone unturned? So right. whether it's a, a third grader, a 30-year-old, or someone that maybe is being introduced to the sport of volleyball for the very first time and just want to support the community. So does the – when a, a, an incredible event is as successful and as exciting as the Women's Final Four, does that help – the work that you do in getting other events like like maybe NCAA championships of any sport uh, into Columbus? I mean, it, it certainly put us on the radar of, of a- Absolutely. Yeah. I think that oftentimes Columbus, we know that we're a great college t- town. Uh, we Most people don't know that we're the 14th largest city. So maybe they didn't realize that we had a, a large arena. Certainly they should know if you're a sports fan, you know that. But the casual fan may not know. Yeah. And we've seen that in our own backyard when we hosted the President's Cup in 2013. Freddie Couples had come in, of course, and it was a big part of that. But typically he would fly in, go straight to Dublin, 
play at the Memorial Tournament. So they stayed downtown for the very first time. And he, I know, was uh, quoted as saying that he had no idea that we had such a vibrant downtown scene. Yeah. And so I think even people that come here on a regular basis don't know enough about what we have to offer. Not only a downtown, which is spectacular, but the arena district itself and the growth with the three sports and then just the growth of that area with restaurants and, and everything. You know, we encourage people now to come early because there's so much to experience in the arena district. I think Ohio, uh, not only Ohio State, we have sort of that town and gown relationship yeah. of, of having a lot to offer. <laughs> so whether it's, you know, from high, high Street North, High Street South, you know, I'm proud. My office, our offices are right there. And yeah. so every day you have a choice. Where should we go for lunch? Uh, what does that look like? And so if you're coming, you're flying in, you're taking a Uber to, to downtown, you do have that chance to, or, you know, driving and parking, you can stay there for the yeah. rest of the time and just walk everywhere. Maybe just uh, one more question before we take a break. Um, you know, a lot of people, Dave and I hear this all the time, they think that if we get Paul McCartney at the Shotter Nationwide Arena, we call him up at home and say, hey, Paul, are you available on July 7th? <laughs> That's true. And he says yes or no, and uh, it's that easy. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize how many sometimes years in advance you work to bring some of these events, like the Women's Final Four, the NCAA a volleyball championship and some other events that have not are still a couple of years away you're working years in advance yes absolutely so right now the pipeline is for you know a little bit of short-term business 2022 but we do have a couple of things in 2029 uh, so that sweet spot yeah. somewhere, somewhere in between <laughs> two and three years perhaps you know i know that we took uh, several staff to see us, us figure skating in detroit and san jose and that would be another great event for columbus uh, maybe earmarking 2024 for an event like that, and it'll take that whole that whole village to come together. Yeah, let's take a break now. Uh, but before we say goodbye in the podcast, uh, we'll ask you how uh, people can get tickets and all that kind of information. You know, we'll do that coming up. More with Linda Logan on the Arena Guys Backstage pod, Pass Podcast coming up. <laughs> The Rock Holiday Tradition returns. Trans-Siberian Orchestra live in concert. Two shows, December 26th, Nationwide Arena. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Millions have witnessed this electrifying concert experience. Trans-Siberian Orchestra's Christmas Eve and other stories. The story continues. Brought to you by these great sponsors. Ben Platt, The Reverie Tour, Schottenstein Center, March 9th, 2022, Ben Platt, with special guest, Jake Wesley Rogers. Get tickets now at benplattmusic.com. Ben Platt, produced by AEG Presents. Hey everybody, Garth Brooks here for everything backstage or any kind of private stuff with any of the arenas here in Columbus. Gary, the arena guy, right here. He's got it. My buddy Garth, you know, my close personal friend. He's all our friend. He's a, he's a friend of Columbus. <laughs> he's a friend of Columbus, yes. The last time he was here, he played six shows, three uh, days in a row, two weekends in a row. So, uh, Garth Brooks, always fun. Uh, he's a good talk. sports fan. He's yes, a he is. Big yes, sports he is. Fan. Absolutely. Speaking of sports, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, smooth. Yeah, speaking of sports, and, and that wasn't even planned. Uh, one of our first podcasts featured Jared Smalley, NBC4 sports director, and it uh, came up with this little bit. You know, the arena guy is fun and informative. Uh, and we call it, uh, try to think, what do we call this segment? And Jared was the first, and we thought we'd make it sports related. This is called Fast Break. Okay, this is the fun Fast part. So uh, get close to the mic there. Okay, I'm what I'm going to do, you're going to hear a music here in a second. It's 60 seconds long. I'm going to ask you some fast-paced questions. Okay. And you've got 60 seconds to answer as many as you can. Let me put on the Arena Guy glasses here. And whenever you're ready. All right. If you could be a professional athlete, what sport would you play? I think baseball. I want that walk-up music. Who's your favorite athlete? <sighs> I... Sandy Koufax. Wow, awesome. I don't know. That's, I don't, that okay. came from somewhere. What would be your walk-up music? Take me out to the ball game. Oh, wow. Who inspires you? 
You can save the arena guy if you want. Okay. No. You know, <laughs> there's so many interesting women doing amazing things in our community that uh, I'll say Megan Kilgore. She's our city auditor, and awesome. she is so smart and makes a lot happen. Okay. Talent or skill that most people don't know you have? I, I think I'm a pretty good cook right now. Oh, Proudest nice. moment? Oh, pr- oh, when I got married. What was your first concert? Bruce Springsteen. Wow. wow, good one. So you can't sleep. What do you do? I play Scrabble. Really? You know. uh, <laughs> on your phone? On my phone. Okay. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> What's your favorite TV show? Right now, my favorite TV show. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm stumped. Okay. I, I have to ask this one, uh, even though we're out of the, previ- the previously announced 60-second time frame. What celebrity do people say you look like? Every now and again, Barbara Streisand. Really? I get that. Every now and yeah, again. I can see that. I can see awesome. that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. And oh, I like this one too. What do you collect? Um, I collect. My my hometown is Fairport Harbor, Ohio, and I find interesting postcards going nice. back to vintage. That's cool. I, I though I do have to note that for a minute there, I could I knew Gary was picturing you laying in bed playing playing with a scrab <laughs> with a scrabble board on your lap. You know, like, I, I should have sleeping. said yeah. yes. I, I'm but so on your phone, yes. Not current. I mean, I play my uh, VCR every night uh, when I watch movies and things, so I'm, so, I'm very behind so the so times. Can I go back and say Ted Lasso just because I binge? Yes. There you go. Yes. I, th- I was going to throw that out there Absolutely. for you because I lived in Kansas City for ten years, and that's where Jason Sudeikis is from. So really? every now and again, he drops a few Kansas City local no- things that I catch. You know? Not a bad show, uh, Emmy winning show. Emmy winning, yes, that's, yes, that's a great yes. show. Yeah, and speaking of great shows. Uh, uh, coming up on October 28th is Kevin Costner, the movie star, the Academy Award winner, and his band Modern West. They've been around for about 15 years, and uh, they are playing Mershon Auditorium. And uh, one of his band members named Blair Forward plays bass and has for the entire run of Modern West. And uh, I had a chance to talk to him the other day about uh, his association with uh, Columbus. He grew up here. And uh, what is it like playing music? with one of the biggest movie stars in the world. One of the shows coming up that I'm really looking forward to is Kevin Costner and Modern West, October 28th at Mershon Auditorium. And joining me now is one of the members of Modern West who happens to be from Columbus. Happy to welcome Blair forward to the Arena Guys Backstage Pass podcast. Blair, how are you doing? Good, man. How are you? Doing great and especially happy to have you here. I'm really looking forward to the concert coming up on the 28th. And it must be extra exciting for you uh, to return home to Columbus. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been back there, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, With the COVID restrictions and everything, I'm not going to be able to see the friends I would like to and hang out. But but I invited a lot of them to the show, and... uh, Hopefully they'll they'll see me. I'll I'll be able to spot them in the crowd or something. I ho- I'm hoping. Yeah, just give them a wave. Oh, uh, well, I will <laughs> play an extra riff for them. Uh, <laughs> being from Columbus, uh, you also have very strong ties to the Columbus music scene. I mean, yeah, you were in one of the most successful bands in Columbus. What in the in the seventies and eighties? Yeah, late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, a band called Spit and Image that uh, we played all around Ohio and a lot in Columbus and uh, at some of the clubs that aren't there anymore, like Zacharias. And, but we played the Newport when it was the Agora and, uh, you know, made a living at it. Yeah. And, and you guys were signed to MC, MCA Records, correct? Yeah, we were with MCA Records, did a record for them. And uh, before that, we did a record on our own as just a spit and image that we put out that was, that was, is what drew, uh, MCA attention to us. So. Gotcha. What was the Columbus music scene like back then? I, I've always heard that it was a very exciting time. It, there were a lot of bands. Everybody was making a living at it, playing every weekend, or you know, and uh, it was just really exciting. There were a lot of lot of good bands there. Um, some bands that are are having um, reunion shows there, like uh, Rosie and Strongbow and. Of course, McGuffey Lane and, um, you know, uh, gosh, Ronald Cole and the Trillionaires. It just goes on and on. There were just a lot of bands. A lot of people uh, watching and listening are shaking their heads saying, oh, yeah, I remember them. Yeah. 
I'm so you some out, but <laughs> time. Yeah, so you eventually moved to LA, I assume, to pursue pursue your musical career. I did. I did, you know, and I got to LA and you know, being from Ohio and a bass player and moving to LA, it was it was a tough you know, there a lot of people are out there wanting to play and um, I was fortunate when I first got there, I met uh, John Coyman, who is in the Modern West Band. And we started a band back in 84. And uh, we're still playing together. We've been together ever since. We do a couple bands together, uh, hmm. Kevin being one of them. And then we have a, a band here in Tucson. And uh, it was it was an exciting time, though. You know, I had to go out and get a job and and uh but which turned out to be a, a a whole nother career you know uh as a day job so mm -hmm. um, I, I was very fortunate yeah so tell me how did you connect with kevin costner well through john who was friends of kevin um uh we john and i did an ep and uh kevin heard it john had played it for kevin and Kevin always wanted to be in music, so uh, he asked John about, uh, you know, starting a band, and and so J uh, Kevin and I met and got along really well, and uh, we have the sa very similar taste in music, and um, uh, so we started playing together, and then we got a record deal in Japan, and we did a record in Japan that did really well in Japan, but uh, at the time... Kevin's movie career was just, he had just finished The Untouchables and uh, getting ready to do Bull Durham. And uh, he was just really busy. And of course, that's the, the career at that point that he decided to follow. And, right. And uh, I, I guess, uh, you know, he's always loved music, but you can't argue with that decision. I mean, Dances with Wolves and the movies you mentioned, now Yellow yeah. is the, the highest rated uh, TV series on on cable, uh, right, right. one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Were you intimidated at all working with him at first? I, well, I can remember driving over to his house. I had an old Datsun pickup truck with my amp in the back. And because um, the first meeting was just, I went over to his house and um, set up and we just kind of talked and I played some of the songs, just the bass parts and and uh, after about five minutes, it was totally relaxed because he's just, a, a, you know, a great guy, uh, very much like, you know, you and I, you know, <laughs> he does things at home that we all do, you know, take out the trash, you know. Take I like that you, uh, yeah, I like that you just compared me to Kevin Costner. Sure. <laughs> so uh, tell me about Kevin Costner, the musician, and his love for music. Well, he's always had a love for me, or since I've known him, a love for music. And um, we're, you know, anybody who loves music just is always there for music. So uh, I know, I know uh, we're excited about doing this tour. And, and he loves touring. It's fun to get out there and, you know, in front of people and do what you do. Right. So I understand you're about ready to start rehearsals. Yeah, we start tomorrow. We fly out to uh, Santa Barbara and we'll all meet it out there and rehearse for a few days. Just, you know, sharpen up and run through things and maybe add some new songs. So we want to make sure that we all are on the same page and just kind of hang out and just gel together. Yeah, yeah, connect. So a lot of people are very familiar with Kevin Costner and Modern West some music. I mean, you've recorded several albums and, uh -huh. and a bunch of music videos over the past decade or so, but some people will see Kevin Costner's name and wonder what the show is all about. So what can you share with us about the band and what can be expected on October 28th at Mershon Auditorium? Well, I think... If you hadn't heard the music, ex uh, expect the unexpected because it's it's 
a powerful band. I'm so fortunate to be playing with these guys, Teddy Morgan and Park Chisholm, and uh, Larry Cobb, uh, and um, Matt Combs, uh, Kevin. We're just, and John Coyman, of course. Uh, we're just, it's just a powerful band. It's a rock and roll. We all love doing what we're doing. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've all been friends. I mean, we've been together for over 15 years, so... Uh, that takes a, a, a deep friendship to, you know, travel and be in close quarters for weeks at a time together. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, the Yellowstone is the highest rated cable series on TV, that which we, we had mentioned, and it's uh, to begin its fourth season. And it's so good. It's so uh, a lot of the music that you'll be performing, uh, like on your new album and in concert, is uh, inspired by or about Kevin's character, John Dutton from Yellowstone. Well, we we have a few songs from Yellowstone that, that the band submitted. You know, we submit songs all the time. And um, unfortunately, it's not just up to Kevin who, who picks the music. But the, the, we've gotten several songs in into the show. And uh, we, we recorded a lot of music for, for it that was inspired by the show. So... That's, mm -hmm. that's where our CD came from, a lot of those. And um, I mean, Kevin's movies have inspired a lot of songs from us. And um, so it, it, you know, it's always exciting. Season four starts when? November 7th. Yeah, coming right up. We have a show that day. So <laughs> that, that's our last show of the, uh, of the tour. So, uh, uh, so I mean, we're so looking forward to it. What are you looking forward to the most coming back to Columbus? Uh, well, uh, I'm not going to be able to see much of it because we get in, I think, at like 6.30 or 7 in the morning. And then uh, the guys will set up and then we, we do sound check. So, and I don't have a car and the COVID restrictions. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the skyline. Mm -hmm. uh, and just just being home, you know. Hopefully, maybe a runner, somebody will have a car. We can I can drive around a little bit. Maybe go to some of my old neighborhoods. Yeah, that's so. right. Well, if you need a driver, I'll be free that day. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Blair, I really look forward to shaking your hand in person and meeting you at the concert October twenty eighth. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, Blair Forward, uh, Columbus native, key member of Kevin Costner in Modern West, performing at Mershon Auditorium, October 28th. Tickets available at Ticketmaster. And Blair, thank you so much. Looking forward to the show. Really appreciate you uh, stopping by the Arena Guy podcast today. Yeah, well, thank you. And uh, I hope everybody comes down and checks out the show. It'll be a lot of fun. I it know. will be. All right. Thanks, Blair. Thank you. Dave Matthews Band. Live. Out here we go. Friday, November 5th, Nationwide Arena. Tickets available now at LiveNation.com. Superstar, Dua Lipa, live in concert, Dua Lipa, Future Nostalgia Tour 2022, Shot and Steam Center, Saturday, February 26th, with special guests, Caroline Polachek and Lolo Zuai. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The phenomenal album, Future Nostalgia, is available to stream and download everywhere. Check more at DuaLipa.com. Hey guys, this is Ryder Kisner with the Cinch World Stuff is Rodeo. You are listening to the Arena Guys Backstage Pass podcast with Gary the Arena Guy and Dave Redelberger. Hey, thank you. <laughs> the rodeo is so much fun, and he's he's one of the great coming uh, back in January. Coming back in January, looking forward to that. Whiplash, the cowboy monkey. We'll be here. We'll be here too. 
riding boogie. A lot of great stuff coming up. And uh, it, I mean, these are seriously some incredible athletes riding uh, the bulls. And and uh, I love to watch that. It's, it's so much fun. It's it's great fun. So. Um, Linda Logan, the executive director of the Greater Columbus Sports Commission, joins us. And um, I do have a pair of tickets for Lauren Daigle, uh, November 11th at the Schottenstein Center. And I'm thinking, let's just make it easy this time. Yeah, sure. The arena guy, follow the arena guy. I mean, if you're really cool, you already follow the arena guy on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even YouTube. Um, no TikTok yet. No TikTok yet. We've got to figure we'll that out. We'll talk to Producer Adam. Producer Adam has some ideas that will embarrass the arena guys. So I've been embarrassed before by not <laughs> shooting a confetti gun on stage, standing next to Garth Brooks or dancing with salt and pepper or trying to do gymnastics with Cirque du Soleil. So, you know, I'll do about anything. But um, why don't you, if you'd like to win a pair of tickets, see Lauren Daigle, November 11th at the Schottenstein Center, follow the arena guy and any of the social media platforms. And send me a note just saying, I loved your podcast or I listened to your podcast, but I wouldn't be upset if you I said made it I all loved. the way through the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Arena guy, you were awesome. No, just anything. Just just leave some sort of a note. You'll be placed in a drawing and uh, uh, I will contact you and uh, get to see Lauren Daigle. Uh, one of those shows that has been rescheduled several times. Several due times. To COVID. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the beginning, COVID was supposed to be like a month or two. And so she was, uh, I think she was rescheduled for like two months past the original date. Yep. And then it became something basically unprecedented. And uh, so it got moved. But we're finally doing the show. And we're excited, very excited to have about her here at the shot. Yeah. There are other shows coming up. Yeah, you know, we have an action-packed schedule starting uh, uh, next week. Or, I'm sorry, what, what, depending on when you're listening to this, let me say October 27th, 29th, and 30th. Not one, not two, but three nights with 21 Pilots doing their takeover tour, Columbus Band. I am so excited to have these guys back, and the, uh, the fans are already going nuts. Very excited. And, Linda, when you drive into work, I hope you know – how to make the right turn to your office and everything because uh next on the 25th of october front and nationwide arena or nationwide boulevard will be renamed 21 pilots boulevard how cool for the week i, I love our boulevard you know the yeah. best sports facilities ever and yeah. just and um, concert facilities and concerts <laughs> the best the best mix of uh all that's good. Sports and entertainment, all that's, that's good, right. yeah. So uh, next week, uh, again, whenever you listen to it, uh, for a full week, uh, it'll be 21 Pilots Boulevard. And I'm not going to give anything else away, Dave, because uh, a lot of us have been working on a few other fan surprises that are going to make that week yeah, come on down to the plaza, especially, exciting. especially at night. Yeah, especially at night, there'll be some fun surprises won't for the fans there. Don't, won't give it away, but check it out. That'll now, be there's fun. there's one night that week that we don't have a 21 Pilots show, but but we have as you as we mentioned earlier, Kevin Costner, uh, you know, in Modern West at Mershon Auditorium on that Thursday night, the 28th. Also here, Little Baby and Friends Boo Fest. Yes, it's Boo Bash. Oh, Boo Bash, sorry. Oh. <laughs> but, but, see, this is why you're here to correct Because me you're everything. the little baby expert, tell me who's opening up. You know, I love this. And these are some of my very favorites. Little baby's opening acts are Gunna, Mooski, uh, of, what, what is this? Sorry. Four, is it four to 42, Doug? <laughs> you and, tell me. And more oh, right. 42, Doug, yes. Adam's laughing because he probably listens to all of them, but uh, I just like saying Gunna and Mooski mostly. <laughs> Those sounds like some fun cocktail drinks. Or yeah. Right? <laughs> and I bet uh, you were listening to Mooski on the way here today, Linda. I, I'll never tell. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, you know, so that, that is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Boo Bash and our friends from Power 107 are uh, going to be out here for that. Uh, Dave Matthews Band right after that, Friday, November 5th, uh, going to be a, a big night with Dave Matthews. The yeah. tour, just a limited number of dates, yeah. and, and Columbus always been. Back to the days when he used to do his shows outdoors at Polaris Amphitheater. Dave Matthews has a great following locally. That's on Friday at Nationwide Arena, the Friday the 5th. And then Sunday, take it after a day off, we're going to have a, a Mercy Me on November 7th. Lauren Daigle, as we mentioned, on uh, November 11th uh, at the Schottenstein Center. Jim Gaffigan on the 14th at Nationwide Arena. And those are just the, you know, November uh, and October shows. Uh, also, you know, we should mention that, you know, the sports season at the shot is also underway. We talked about the excitement of the, that Blue Jackets opening night. Uh, I was here at the Schottenstein Center for opening night for the men's hockey team yeah. uh, when the game went to overtime. And it was so much fun uh, to see Ohio State hockey back on ice. And, of course, the basketball team and uh, the men's and women's teams both 
have some exciting things to be excited about this year. Yeah, I mean, we're full steam ahead with sports in Columbus between Ohio State and, and the crew and and uh, even all the ancillary Blue facilities, Jackets. you know, the, yeah. the volleyball team is doing great Absolutely. in the top 10 right now. Oh, exciting times. Yeah, over at the Cavelli Center, yes. that, that sold out game they had with Michigan uh, was insane. The energy that was there the, and the top 10 uh, teams for NCAA volleyball right now, seven are within driving distance to Columbus. So hold on. To your tickets. <laughs> no, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's very, very exciting. And the NCAA uh, uh, Volleyball Championship, you know, we've been talking about that. What else can you tell us about that? How can people get tickets? And, you can and go to our website, details. which is columbusports.org, uh, and look very front and center. Also, the NCAA does have their website as well, take you to the same place. But uh, exciting. Yeah. yeah, and you know, there's always the perception, especially when it comes to NCAA championships, events are sold out. Now, there are tickets available, and there are you know some great options from single sessions to if you want to go to everything. Hey, it's all right there, and, and you can find it. And some some great ticket price options for folks too. Absolutely. So whether it's the premium suite seating, those wonderful terrace tables are still available. I love that. And we have about. 3,000 tickets left, so we're getting close to that number. Yeah, we're getting we're getting close. But so we, definitely, you know, get, still plenty of tickets still available. For sure. And and those are two words that uh, producer Adam knows that I don't care for, sold out, because very rarely is an event sold out. Now, there, there might be near capacity or something, but uh, sold out. We like there, when it happens. If, if we absolutely do, <laughs> and it, right. does, it does happen, but if there's one ticket left, it's not sold out. So there is always... We get you in. We'll get you in. An come on down. Opportunity to to come to these great events, and uh, I, uh, you know, about ready to wrap it up, but I just can't give up the volleyball championship. Uh, it's, it's it's very exciting. very very exciting. Just a few few weeks away, um, it's right around the holidays. A great Christmas pre Christmas holiday go. gift. I like the right? so, Yes, yes. So there's a, I think there's a lot of opportunities, but I'm impressed with your lineup. Your your team's been working really hard too. I think uh, you know what we're just uh, are a great collaborative team whether it be sports or concerts or special events um, and it's speaking really, of collaborating it's, it's, it's great to be in columbus arena isn't? guy we just did a great oh, little yeah. video for ohio state athletics for the football team they, they were actually I they, they right, reached they, out to us they said who can guy, help Dave? sell some football yeah, tickets they contacted us <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and uh, uh, look out on Ohio State uh, uh, social media accounts uh, for the football team. We are uh, getting the word out about Scarlet, Scarleting the Stadium. Scarlet the Stadium. Yeah, it's called Scarlet the Stadium, uh, uh, October 30th for the Penn State game. And uh, The video just showed up in our inbox. Oh, I haven't seen it yet, but oh. I just saw the email. Oh. And that's a big game. Yes. That is a, well, yeah, but it's even bigger because uh, uh, we <laughs> right. are helping make the whole stadium the ambassadors. scarlet. So, yeah, so that'll be fun. That was a lot of fun. Linda, we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. See you in the neighborhood. Yeah, see you in the neighborhood. I want to remind everyone that for all the events that Dave mentioned that we've talked about today. And so many more. All the details. And plus, if you have any Want more details on COVID and all that kind of stuff, the, the, you know? Yeah, what you need to know before you go to an event. If you're want to, if you coming to 21 Pilots, there are some restrictions in place, and, and we want to make sure you get in and make it as easy as possible. So go to, you know, either nationwidearena.com or schottensteincenter.com. We have a What to Expect page, plus check the page of the event you're attending because some tours have special requests set up for you. Yeah, and at the bottom of that, when you when you click on the event that you're attending or interested in, just click on that little box that says more information, and it's, it's right there. Yep. And it's very uh, helpful now since, uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty with things. We clear it all up for you on the website. So uh, nationwidearena.com, theschottensteincenter.com, and, of course, you can follow the arena guy on yes. Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, YouTube, just uh, make something up. I'm there. Yes. <laughs> Clay Hall said, Arena guy, you're everywhere. You're the Forrest Gump of social media. There you media. go. <laughs> we'll see you there. <laughs> so I want to remind everybody we'll before we that. say goodbye that Lauren Daigle, we've got a pair of tickets for the November 11th show at the Schottenstein Center. Good seat's still available. You can go to, the, to Ticketmaster.com for, for details there. But you can win a pair of tickets. Just uh, message me and like the Arena guy on the social media platforms that we just mentioned. So, Linda, once again, thank you very thank much. Thank you both. And Adam. Yes, Adam was great, too. Hey, the Arena Guys Backstage Pass podcast is hosted by Gary the Arena Guy and me, Dave Rettelberger, executive producer Aaron Thomas. Our producer is Adam Paddock. For concert information, go to schottensteincenter.com or nationwidearena.com. And be sure to subscribe to the Arena Guys Backstage Pass podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your favorite podcast. I'm Dave Rettelberger. And I'm the Arena Guy. We'll see you next time.